The critical power concept is less well known compared to something like functional threshold power, despite being preferred by some top exercise physiologists and several cycling federations too. We think that critical power testing can be used as a better alternative to something like FTP testing, since critical power offers several unique benefits and is based upon more robust scientific concepts. So in this video, we'll explain what critical power is, why you might want to use the model, and how to go about performing accurate testing. Critical power derives from the concept that the power duration relationship above a certain level follows a well-defined hyperbolic curve as can be seen here. This curve can be defined by two distinct parameters, the critical power and the W prime. Critical power is the power output you'll trend towards when riding at a high intensity, as exercise duration is increased indefinitely. Indefinitely is a mathematical construct of course, and not actually true in practice, which is why this power duration model fails to hold at or below critical power. In practice, cyclists can typically only sustain power outputs at critical power for around 30 minutes, though there are certainly inter-individual differences in this regard. Whilst it's been shown that critical power occurs close to other related markers like the maximal lactate steady state, in most cases, critical power shouldn't be used as a direct replacement for either MLSS or FTP. If you wish to measure these specific values, use blood lactate samples or one of the accepted protocols to determine FTP. The fact that these markers aren't synonymous with each other does somewhat limit critical power's direct application given that most training platforms use FTP as their central power-based value. However, we found that taking around 96% of critical power as an FTP estimate generally works quite well for most individuals, especially if you also use your own subjective sensations to individualize your FTP and training intensity targets further, since none of these markers are one single value or fixed from one day to the next anyway. W prime is measured in kilojoules, i.e. units of energy, and is the amount of work that can be performed above the critical power. This is a fixed amount of energy for each athlete, so whether expended quickly or in a more sustained way, the total area under the curve is the same in every case. W prime can be conceptualized a bit like a battery, which depletes whenever a cyclist rides at an intensity above their critical power, and then recharges when power output is dropped below critical power. The further below the critical power your power output drops, the quicker the recharge rate is. W prime is a function of the VO2 slow component, VO2 max, the depletion of limited intramuscular substrates, i.e. phosphocreatine and glycogen, and the associated accumulation of fatigue-related metabolites, such as hydrogen ions, adenosine diphosphate, and inorganic phosphate too. Each of these has been associated with impaired muscle contractile function. Now, W prime can vary widely from cyclist to cyclist. Athletes in more endurance oriented disciplines may have a W prime that's between 9 and 15 kilojoules for men or between 6 and 10 kilojoules for women, although these values can be larger for athletes with high VO2 max values. For more punchy endurance disciplines, slightly higher W prime values are seen, e.g. 15 to 18 kilojoules for men and 11 to 13 kilojoules for women. Out and out sprinters can have W prime values in excess of 25 to 30 kilojoules. By performing a series of maximal efforts, each lasting somewhere between 3 minutes and 20 minutes, it's possible to plot the relationship between critical power and W prime and determine the values of these parameters. The obvious benefit of critical power testing then is that it gives you two physiological markers, critical power and W prime. As the related lactate threshold is a balance between the aerobic and anaerobic systems, knowing both critical power and W prime can be useful in determining how best to balance these different parts of your physiology. Critical power also helps in setting more individualized training zones if you're particularly anaerobically strong or weak. That's because common FTP test protocols like the 20 minute test and the ramp test that are popular in online training software make assumptions about the extent to which the anaerobic energy systems contribute during the test and can sometimes produce FTP estimates that are inaccurate by as much as 10 to 15%. In contrast, the critical power model inherently takes into account the amount of energy available above this threshold and can thus produce better estimates of maximal sustainable power if you happen to be particularly anaerobically strong or limited. 
Another benefit is that once you have your critical power and W prime values, you can use the critical power equation to predict the maximal power you could hold over various durations, or the length of time you could hold a given power output for durations between three and 30 minutes. So it can be useful for creating pacing strategies for controlled maximal efforts like hill climbs and time trials. Next, we'll look at how critical power and W prime can be calculated. It's not essential to understand the critical power calculations in detail, but we've included the maths for those who are interested. There are a range of methods for determining critical power and W prime with varying levels of complexity and no accepted gold standard approach. In our view, the most practical and easily accessible approach is one where the power duration relationship is transformed into a linear relationship by plotting power against one over time as shown below. For those who are mathematically minded, the equation relating to power and time then becomes power equals W prime over time plus critical power. By completing a series of maximal efforts, we can plot this linear power duration relationship to determine W prime and critical power, where critical power is the y-intercept and W prime is the gradient. Several studies have proposed that critical power and W prime can be determined from just two maximal efforts. In our experience though, using just two maximal efforts is highly sensitive to the specific power outputs and or test durations used, making repeat tests hard to compare, and can result in inaccurate estimates under certain circumstances. It's for this reason that we recommend using three to four maximal test efforts to calculate critical power and W prime accurately. Now let's look at how to determine critical power and W prime in practice. So in order to determine these two values, you'll want to complete three to four maximal efforts, each lasting between three minutes and 20 minutes. It's worth noting that the three minute all out test is another method for determining critical power. For most athletes, the three minute all out test, whilst being short in duration, is likely to be too taxing and daunting a prospect to repeat regularly and requires a unique zero pacing strategy and some important equipment settings to get absolutely right. If you are interested to learn more about the three minute all out test though, there are some really good resources out there by Dr. Mark Burnley and others. So coming back to our preferred multi-effort method, to get a good spread of durations, we'd recommend test efforts lasting three minutes, five to six minutes, and 12 minutes, with the optional addition of a 20 minute effort too. The optional fourth effort will help improve the accuracy of your results. The five minute and 20 minute test results can also be used to compare your data with a power profile chart, Plus you can also cross-reference your critical power with FTP as calculated from the 20 minute effort. Each maximal effort should be paced as consistently as possible, so don't start too hard and risk fading dramatically towards the end. The tests should be performed on different days with at least 24 hours of rest in between so that your results aren't impacted too much by fatigue. Trying to complete multiple test efforts on the same day will tend to underestimate your W prime value because the W prime may not be fully reconstituted by the time you begin the second test effort. Make sure you warm up well before each maximal effort. This is important because one of the assumptions of the critical power model is that the aerobic system kicks in instantaneously to provide energy during each maximal effort. In practice though, this isn't strictly true and there's a lag between the effort starting and the aerobic system ramping up its energy contribution. However, this lag can be minimized by warming up well beforehand. Research looking at oxygen uptake after a warm-up suggests a good warm-up should include the following. A gradual increase in exercise intensity from around a 2 out of 10 to a 4 out of 10 effort level, then some hard efforts above your expected FTP slash critical power or lactate threshold power where you should feel lactate levels building somewhat. These efforts should feel moderately hard and not all out. Then finally, a short recovery period, e.g. four to five minutes of gentle riding to allow lactate levels to reduce. Once you've completed the testing, you can use a critical power calculator like the one that we've created, which is linked in the description below the video. We'll use this calculator to demonstrate the process of calculating things here, but there are others out there that you can use too. So step one, enter your test duration in seconds and your average power for each test effort. Step two, your critical power and W prime values will then be calculated automatically by the spreadsheet as shown here. 
Make sure you look at the correct solution, e.g. the four test solution, if you completed four maximal efforts. The goodness of fit metric tells you how accurate your critical power and W prime values are likely to be. Ideally, you want the goodness of fit to be above 97%. Then step four, once your critical power and W prime values have been calculated, you can also use the spreadsheet to estimate the power you can hold for a given duration or the length of time that you could hold a given power output. It's worth noting that these calculations will only be accurate provided the duration is between three minutes and 20 minutes. Simply type in the duration or power of interest as shown below. The associated duration or power will then be calculated. Again, make sure you're looking at the correct solution. Now in terms of a couple of key testing tips, try to keep things consistent. Both our own experience and data from scientific studies shows that the length of testing intervals can have a notable impact on your critical power and W prime estimates. So if you're trying to track changes over time, try to keep the length of the test intervals consistent each time you test. Also be cautious when interpreting your results from the first one to two times that you perform these kinds of tests, as the results will likely be less reliable due to suboptimal pacing. Research shows that results become more reliable once you've completed three or more familiarization trials of the test efforts. So to wrap up, we should consider the limitations of critical power testing as well. It's worth mentioning firstly that like any field-based testing that demand maximal efforts to be produced, the results can be highly sensitive to factors such as fatigue, motivation, nutrition and environmental conditions, which can influence performance on that particular day. There will always be day-to-day -day differences in performance and your associated critical power and W prime values. Try your best to control these confounding factors as much as you can. We've already mentioned above that the test results are sensitive to testing durations and will be less reliable if you're inexperienced with these durations. However, this is true of other field-based testing methods as well, such as the various protocols for determining FTP. There's also no getting around the fact that you'll want to ideally perform at least three, if not four maximal efforts in a fairly short space of time. And that's not an easy task. Ultimately though, we think that critical power testing is one of the best field-based testing options available to cyclists and can provide some extremely insightful physiological information that basic FTP testing lacks. So hopefully this video was useful in providing you with an overview of the critical power concept and how you might go about using it in your own training. Do check the links in the description for further related resources and add your questions and comments below the video too. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll catch you on another video soon.